TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Lebanese militants launched a barrage of rockets toward Israel's northern communities today, drawing an Israeli retaliatory response. Lebanon marks today its one-year anniversary since a deadly explosion devastated its capital, Beirut. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett emphasizes that Iran's efforts to distance its direct responsibility for the actions of its proxies has come to an end. Three rockets were launched toward Israel's northern communities earlier today, drawing Israeli retaliatory artillery fire toward southern Lebanon. Rocket alert sirens sounded several minutes after 12 o'clock when two of the launched projectiles exploded in uninhabited areas within the northern town of Kiryat Shmona, while a third projectile fell short, exploding instead within Lebanese territory. No injuries were reported, however, in light of the hot and dry weather conditions with temperatures nearing 39 degrees Celsius equal to 102 degrees Fahrenheit, fires were sparked in the areas of impact. The IDF immediately responded with artillery fire toward the origin of the launched rockets, namely the Hayam agricultural fields in southern Lebanon. Subsequently, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz conducted a situation assessment together with IDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi, the Chief of the IDF's Intelligence Directorate, Major General Tamir Haiman, Director of the Defense Ministry's Policy Bureau, Zohar Palti, and the Chief of the IDF's Operations Directorate, Major General Oded Basiouk. Jerusalem's top defense official instructed the senior officers to immediately deliver a firm message to the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon. While in tandem, the IDF was also instructed to expand its response. Shortly thereafter, at approximately 2.15 p.m., IDF artillery forces executed additional strikes by artillery fire against targets along the Lebanese border. It is important to note that Lebanon marks today its one-year anniversary since a devastating explosion ripped through the country's capital, Beirut. Therefore, according to Lebanese sources who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity, the rocket fire toward Israel may have been a failed attempt by those responsible to distract the Lebanese people from their heinous crime, further insisting that the Iranian proxy Hezbollah was behind the blast even though no investigation has been initiated for fear of retribution. However, in an address to the nation last night, Lebanese President Michel Aoun pledged to do everything in his power to facilitate an investigation that will bring those responsible to justice. <laughs> مهما على شأنه وما بيخاف من الحصانات والحمايات لتحقيق العدل ومحاسبة المتسببين بالانفجار لازم القضاء يروح للآخر بالتحقيق والمحاكمات وأنا معه وحده حتى تنجيل الحقيق تتحقق العدالة شهداؤنا يستصرخ الضمير وعيون العالم شاخص علينا والتحدي اللي عم يواجه المحقق العدلي ومعه القضاء بعدين هو كشف الحقيقة وإجراء المحاكمة وإصدار الحكم العادل بفضرة زمنية مقبولة لأن العدالة المتأخرة ليست بعدالة The Lebanese head of state went on to stress his relentless efforts to form a new government in Beirut that after repeated failed attempts had consequently withheld crucial international aid for the purpose of bailing out Lebanon, which currently faces its worst economic crisis since the deadly civil war of the mid-70s to the early 90s. I كنت بتمنى تصدر مراسيم التشكيل بأسرع وقت ممكن بس بوعدكم إنه عم بعمل كل جهد إيد بإيد مع الرئيس المكلف ومثل ما بيقتضي الدستور بتزليل كل العراقيل بوجه تشكيل حكومة انقاذية. 
Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron hosted a donors conference for Lebanon today, during which he vehemently criticized the failing and corrupt Lebanese political class and blamed them for the country's economic turmoil. The French leader, who was joined by 40 other world leaders, including those of Egypt, Jordan, Iraq and Canada, went on to highlight his country's intention to directly assist the people of Lebanon including those who were impacted by the devastating blast in Beirut. Il y a un an jour pour jour une terrible explosion ravageait le port de Beirut et je crois que nous avons encore tous et toutes en mémoire la ville défigurée et surtout ses vies traumatisées et nous n'oublions rien rien des des victimes de leurs familles de celles et ceux qui ont perdu la vie de leurs proches mais aussi de celles et ceux dont la vie a été profondément bousculée, renversée par cette terrible explosion. Je suis aujourd'hui en mesure de vous annoncer que nous allons, dans les 12 mois qui viennent, mettre en place près de 100 millions d'euros de nouveaux engagements en appui direct à la population du Liban pour ce qui concerne la France. Cette aide portera sur l'éducation, avec un soutien exceptionnel aux familles, aux élèves, aux étudiants, Elle portera sur l'aide alimentaire et nous allons en outre accroître notre soutien à l'agriculture dans ce cadre-là. Meanwhile, two Western intelligence officials in a conversation with TV7 voiced outrage over Hezbollah's chief role in abstracting the formation of a new technocratic government. They further noted that reforming Beirut's corrupt system is evidently not in Hezbollah's interest while also raising the alarm that unless the international community acts to eradicate Iran's belligerent influence over the country, a civil war is only a matter of time. Back to Israel's northern sector, where Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett toured the country's northern front, during which he held a comprehensive situation assessment with the IDF's top commanders. Subsequently, Premier Bennett, alongside Chief of Staff Kohavi and Northern Command Chief Amir Baram, leveled a warning to the Iranian leadership in Tehran. The Iranians need to understand that it's not possible to sit in Tehran and to get out of there all the Middle East. This is finished. Bennett went on to highlight Jerusalem's efforts to mobilize the world against the regime in Tehran, which has seemingly stepped up its adventurism, especially in the maritime sphere. Immediately after the attack of the Iranian אנחנו שיתפנו את המודיעים שלנו עם ידידינו בארצות הברית, בבריטניה ובמקומות אחרים. לאף אחד אין ספק מי עומד מאחורי האירוע, אבל אנחנו סיפקנו גם ראיות קשיחות ליתר ביטחון. במקביל, למרבה הצער, נציג של האיחוד האירופי מתכוון להשתתף בטקס ההשבעה של הנשיא האיראני החדש, ראיסי. ראיסי הוא הנשיא האיראני הכי קיצוני עד כה, והתחרות קשה. אני קורא מפה לאיחוד האירופאי, אי אפשר לדבר על זכויות אדם ובמקביל לתת כבוד לרוצח, תליין, שחיסל מאות מתנגדי משטר. בנושא הספינה ובנושא האיראני בכלל, אנחנו פועלים לרתום את העולם, אבל במקביל יודעים גם לפעול לבד. איראן יודעת כבר את המחיר שאנחנו גובים כשמישהו מאיים על ביטחוננו. Turning to the southern Israeli front, where Defense Minister Benny Gantz concluded a tour of the IDF Southern Command, during which he participated in a situation assessment aimed at reviewing the recent military operation against the Islamist organizations in the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, namely Operation Guardian of the Walls. I am going to start the tour with the Defense Minister Benny Gantz, where we stood on the issue of the war after the Shomer HaChomot. I said in the end of the war, שמה שהיה הוא לא מה שיהיה. מדינית וגם מבצעית הראינו באמצעות התגובות שלנו שעלו מדרגה מול כל הפרת ריבונות. ישראל מוכנה לכל תרחיש, הסדרה או הסלמה. אנו ממשיכים בעזרת שותפינו המצרים שיש להם תפקיד חיובי, כמו גם עם גורמים בינלאומיים נוספים, לפעול שהשקט יימשך לטווח ארוך, שאזרחי עזה יזכו לרווחה כלכלית ושהבנים כולם ישובו הביתה. לצד זאת, אנחנו גם נערכים מבצעית בצפירת מאות מטרות כדי להגן על, מטר... על תושבי הדרום ולהסיר כל גורם מאיים. Defense Minister Gantz went on to thank Qatar for its role in donating humanitarian aid to the residents of the Gaza Strip, all the while reiterating that so long as quiet is preserved, 
the better the situation will become to both the residents of Gaza as well as those in Israel. Israel is very strong in the trauma of the Qatar to the government, and we are working to make a better position for Israel, to the government of the Palestinians, and the members of the Palestinians, and the members of the Palestinians, who are suffering Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up the people of Gaza in prayer for their salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.